This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. Today, I want to talk about a Bitcoin hostile node attack. This is a question I've been getting a lot frequently. What would happen if some enemy actor like the US government, BlackRock, China, Russia, ship coiners, whoever it is, what would happen if they spun up 500,000 new Bitcoin nodes and then used them to try to print more Bitcoin to increase the 21 million cap to try to attack the Bitcoin network to vote to change Bitcoin or something like this? I think it's a good question. What is a Bitcoin node? It's a computer that runs Bitcoin software in order to check that the consensus rules of Bitcoin are being followed. These are rules like, for example, has this chunk of Bitcoin, has this UTXO been spent before? If so, you cannot spend it again because you can't have good money if the same money can be spent twice. Is the miner trying to collect a block subsidy greater than 3.125 Bitcoin? This is another thing that's very important after the halving to verify that miners aren't trying to collect more money than they are owed. Does this block exceed the allowed data size or does it contain stuff that I don't want it to contain? So anyone can spin up a node on a Raspberry Pi or an old laptop by downloading the Bitcoin Core software and running it. We'll talk more about that at the end of this video. Special note here, we're talking about Bitcoin nodes, not Bitcoin miners who use a different kind of computer called an ASIC for their mining or hashing. If you're finding this video helpful, I just ask you briefly here to hit the subscribe button, give this video a like, leave a comment, and share this video with a friend. So this is the map of all the reachable Bitcoin nodes. We can see they're found all over the world on every continent. Those are reachable nodes. If you take a look at the total number of nodes, including unreachable nodes, you end up with something. According to BitNodes here, it's 63,000, 64,000 nodes. I've seen estimates in excess of 100,000 nodes. But this at least gives us an idea of how many Bitcoin nodes are currently being run in the world. And so if someone spun up 500,000 nodes, that would obviously be a huge percentage increase. But the real question is, does having more Bitcoin nodes give you more power over the network. So for example, if I personally decide to run five nodes instead of just one node, would that give me five votes on the network? And the answer is no, because Bitcoin is not a democracy, at least not in the strict sense. For example, if 20% of the nodes want to keep the maximum supply at 21 million, and then we have 80% of the nodes wanting to increase the maximum supply to 22 million coins, those supply increasers cannot force the traditional nodes who want to run the 21 million Bitcoin software. They cannot force these traditional nodes to change the, change the software that they're running on their own machines to increase the max supply. So what happens is these supply increasers who want 22 million Bitcoin, they just end up running their own modified version of the software while you and I would keep running the traditional version of Bitcoin that includes the 21 million max supply cap. Now this would be what's called a network fork. There'd be now two different Bitcoin networks with different max supply caps, and you'd have to pick which network you wanted to be part of. I know which one I would pick. Why would you and I want to keep running the original 21 million version? That's because running the 22 million max supply cap version would create an extra million Bitcoin, which would dilute are holding. So if I previously held 1 million Bitcoin, 4.762% of the total supply, and ran the new software that increased the supply cap to 22 million, in that case, then I would now own only 4.545% of the total Bitcoin, and I would have diluted myself down from 4.762%. So by changing the software to the 22 million version, I would have diluted my own wealth. And there's obviously very strong reasons why economic actors would never want to do something like this. But this really leads us to the crux of the matter, which is that running a Bitcoin node only matters if you actually use it. Only economic node operators, as they're called, matter. So you shouldn't run a Bitcoin node just to help out the Bitcoin network. You should run a Bitcoin node so that you won't have to trust someone else's node when you send and receive Bitcoin or check on your holdings. If you're not using your own node and you're interacting with a Bitcoin network, chances are you are using someone else's node. In fact, it's 100% guarantee you're using someone else's node because you need access to a node in order to talk to the Bitcoin network and transact on it. So it's very important, don't trust, verify. This is why you should run your own Bitcoin node for your own Bitcoin transactions. So if you run a node in your basement, a Bitcoin node, but then you rely on Trezor's node, via your Trezor hardware wallet and Trezor suite, if you rely on Trezor's node for sending and receiving Bitcoin, then you are not an economic node operator. You are not a truly sovereign Bitcoiner, and Bitcoin is nothing really without clubs running and using 
their own nodes. If we end up in a world where only Coinbase and BlackRock and Trezor run their own nodes on the network, then we will have lost. So what happens if the US government, BlackRock, etc., some enemy decides to spin up 500,000 nodes of their own and start enforcing a new rule set? What we do is we just ignore them and keep running our own nodes. What happens if someone proposes a Bitcoin software change that we don't like? We just ignore them and keep running our own nodes. Neither the Bitcoin miners nor the Bitcoin devs nor anyone else, even in a position of power or influence, can force us to change the software that we run on our own nodes. Of course, if you're relying on Trezor's node, then you are dependent on them and whether they decide to upgrade or change their software, you really don't have a choice. You're gonna to have to keep using them if you don't know how to use your own node. Can they make it illegal? Could a government make it illegal, for example, to run a certain form of software on your node? Not today in the US where running software is considered a form of free speech that's protected by the First Amendment. Obviously, constitutional protections are overridden all the time. This situation could deteriorate to the point where they ban running nodes either in the US or elsewhere. The good thing about this, the good news about this though, is it's really not enforceable at scale. You could just keep running your own node over Tor. You could change countries. You could just keep running that, that uh, node and not tell anyone. And this would require the government to go door to door to try to stop people from doing this. So it's a very difficult thing to stop. So this is the basic setup. You have your own node. You use some intermediate connecting software like Sparrow Wallet for desktop or laptop. And you use that to allow your hardware wallet to communicate with the Bitcoin network via this connecting software and sending signals across your own node. If you're gonna buy a hardware wallet, and all these companies that I mentioned, I'm not affiliated in any way, I'm not being compensated in any way by any of them. My favorite two hardware wallets that I use are the cold card. You should be sure to buy these from the original manufacturers from CoinKite itself, which I'll put a link to in the description notes below. And I also like the Blockstream Jade a lot as well. I prefer the coin card, uh, the cold card, but it is more expensive. The Blockstream Jade is a very solid product as well at a lower price point. So you need to get one of those hardware wallets. And then what you can do is you can download the Sparrow wallet for free. This is free and open source software. You just want to make sure you're downloading it from the correct website. And if you know how to verify a release, there's some notes here uh, in terms of doing that to make sure that you have the version that was signed by uh, the developer that it hasn't been changed or anything like that. So you, you download the Sparrow Wallet software to your desktop or laptop. This is not available for mobile at this point. And then what you do is you connect your Sparrow Wallet to your hardware wallet. I have two videos here, which I'll link to in the description notes below, two videos on YouTube, the first one about Sparrow and the next one about how to connect your hardware wallet, especially your Jade, to the Sparrow Wallet. And then all you need to do, you can, when you're first starting out, you can use the Sparrow Wallet with someone else's node with one of their public Electrum servers, but you really want to get to the point, and I'm sure you realize that at this point, you want to get to the point of running your own node and connecting to it via Sparrow. So I'll put this link in the description notes below as well, how to connect Sparrow to Bitcoin Core directly. And you all you need to do then is download and have a version of the Bitcoin software running on that same laptop. You can either download Bitcoin Core. Also, people are beginning to move over as well to Bitcoin Knots, which is an alternate version that still enforces the same consensus rules. But these are the two major forms of Bitcoin software. A really easy way of connecting Sparrow to your own node is to use either Umbral or Start nine i've been playing around with start nine for the past couple months and really enjoying it and so this basically allows you 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 uh, can either buy a server or or build your own and then what you do is you run bitcoin core on that you connect to sparrow through the electrum uh the electrum server uh option uh the using electors on start nine which is it's also available on umbral as well this is something that is fairly easy to do on your own there's lots of uh there's lots of instructions on the website here. If you want a little bit more hand-holding, it's something I covered in my last live class over at Bitcoin University Premium. I'll put a link to this in the description notes below. This is a paid version of it where I talk about Start9 and setting up your own node, and I show how I'm currently uh, running it with Sparrow and my own hardware wallet. So that's another thing you can do after you've exhausted all the free resources that I have on 
uh, on YouTube. And I'll put a link to this in the description notes below. You can just go to join and you can get access to the Bitcoin course as well as future live classes and recordings of the current live class. But either way, the most important thing is to start down this path. Maybe check out these free videos first and start figuring out how to run your own node. And so if we do end up with a situation where there are people proposing an upgrade that you are not uh, in favor of, you will have your own node and you'll be able to resist it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.